Welcome to another episode of Behind the Dreamers. I'm Jennifer Loading, and we are talking to the achievers, the creators, the magic makers, and the dreamers. These are our friends. These are your friends, and they are living the extraordinary. Well, here we are, another episode of Behind the Dreamers. I'm so excited about my guest today. He is known as the Speed Doctor, which I like this. I looked this up. I like it. He's an accomplished athlete, a two-time world champion, and an Olympic gold medalist. So you guys are going to be in for a treat today. I'm so excited to hear his story and what he's doing. But before we get him on here, I need to do a quick shout out to our sponsors. So today's episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Photography. If you are a creator needing post-production, consultation, or promotion, Walt is your guy. Whether short films, YouTube films, photography work, or a new headshot, he can help you find a solution to match your needs. To learn more about Walt and his work, you're going to want to go to photosbywalt.com. We also want to give a shout out to my friend Chris Klo of Upbeat Media Productions. If you are in need of turnkey special events, Klo is your go-to. To learn more about him and his work, you're going to want to go to UpbeatMediaPro.com. All right. You can tell I've done that a few times, right? <laughs> no, it's awesome. You know, it takes teamwork to make things happen. It's right. Great services, great sponsors. That's right. I agree. All right. So my friend today, Robert Esme, says he has valuable insights into the mental and physical discipline required to succeed at the highest sports level. And I would say so. I think I would probably agree with him. He's an experienced motivational speaker, aside from being an amazing athlete, and the co-founder of Critique.com. He offers a unique perspective on the intersection of sports and technology. So I'm excited. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Jennifer. I'm looking forward to uh, this conversation. Uh, maybe we should grab some food together and have a chat or some tea, but, you know, we'll improvise and have some fun. How's that? Yeah, absolutely. We should have done that. You're right. I'm all about that. I love tea. In fact, it's just yeah. right now is my time to usually have my tea. <laughs> You're speaking my language. All right, Robert. Well, I'm so excited to have you here today. Like I said, you're an accomplished athlete, with that, which I think is so fun. And I've had several amazing athletes on this show, which has been so much fun. I love to get into the mindset of them because I, too, not an athlete like you, but I'm a former marathon runner. And so I understand the, you know, the, the mindset that goes behind running and trying to compete and all that stuff. And I think there's so many parallels in being an, an athlete and in sports is is same as in being an entrepreneur i think there are a lot of common threads in this stuff that we do so i'm super excited Absolutely. to just chat with you but what i want to do first i want to give a little background to our audience because they're like who is this person that is on this show today so tell us a little bit about who you are and what you've done well myself uh, i'm coming out of um the mecca of DNA of Speed Demon, right from Jamaica. I came right out of the wombs. Boom. I even missed bypass crawling. I went right into walking, running, sprinting. Um, left there. Uh, came to Canada for a better opportunity, better education um, with my family. And uh, landed in Sudbury. So I went from plus 26 to minus 26 within 24 hours. And boy, it was it cold. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm still wearing sweater. <laughs> Yeah, it's but, cold up there. You got that Canadian air. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the greatness is uh, wonderful people, um, warms your heart. And I believe, in my mind, dreams can happen anywhere, anytime. It's for one to realize there's opportunities every day to maximize it. And when I came here, it was all rocks, pretty much. And I'm like, oh, that's a great foundation to build something on the rocks. <laughs> right? So um, I was inspired to have three things in my life as a child growing up. One of them was to become an Olympic champion. The second is to be a businessman. And the third, to be a father. Father year after year. And I knew for a fact the first 25 years, there's going to be a lot of sacrifices along the way. Um, and I have to be selfish for the first 25. And I feel like if I put the work in, I can attain that within my first 25 years of my life. And um, I was inspired to go to the Olympics and attain that gold medal uh, for the first 25 Second 25, um, integrated the family and business at the same time, uh, becoming a speed doctor. And the crazy thing is I, I stumbled into the speed doctor because uh, I work with uh, marathoners. So I had doctors and carols who was uh, sending referrals over to me because they've been injured from different things. And I developed a six-week program, get them healthy, clean up the technique, and send them back on the way. 
they end up being uh, taking about 10 to 15 minutes off the marathon times and they're just my phone just start blowing up <laughs> and that's how I got into uh, the speed coach training um, we, we started from the marathon runners so thank you marathon runners so speed comes in all shapes size distance and all packages so I became yeah. the speed doctor <laughs> I love it but, yeah. I love it and you know what's so funny about this is I two things I want to say is the one that you had kind of like you knew from the beginning what you wanted to do. I'm impressed with that because yeah. I always say on this show that and people hear me say this like all the time that our lives are not linear, right? Like most of us go do all this like side, we go over here, we come back over here, we go over here. And then all of a sudden we go, I think I figured out what I'm supposed to be doing now, right? Like, yeah. so I am absolutely impressed that you like that. And I love that you said you just came out with, you know, Get the walking or whatever you said, the crawling, whatever that was. It just went to the right running. out the belly. Yeah. Yeah. I love this because normally I ask, it's like this question will come up. I'll be like, did you know that you were going to be a singer? You know, when you came out of the womb, did you know you were going to be an entrepreneur? And so I, I like that you kind of had this vision of what you wanted to do and you made it happen, right? Like you yeah. created it. But I also love that you said the speed doctor thing sort of came on an accident, like it, you kind of fell into it because I think that's the nonlinear parts, the byproduct of all the other things that you did, right? Absolutely, Jennifer, you're right. And, you know, yes, sometimes we know exactly what we want, but um, sometimes there's other opportunities that present itself that you have to step back and say, hey, can I build onto this? Can I take it somewhere? And we know for a fact that dreams come in all shapes, sizes. Uh, sometimes there's other areas in your life, a different age there, you need to accomplish certain dreams. It's never too late to accomplish a dream. It's just to be able to lock yourself in and get focused and have that plan and support yourself with su supporting people who believe in their dreams. Because we know for a fact there's a lot of dream killers out there and they're just waiting. Them haters are just waiting to come and kill your dreams, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, they're your dreams. You need to protect them. And yes, you can share it, right? Because it also holds you accountable when you're going off track and say, hey, you remember you were gonna do this? What happened? <laughs> Right. Yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, um, share with the right people who care about you and want the best for you and for growth. And just, and be open minded for those haters, because guess what? You need that hater to help fuel you. <laughs> right. And they're hating you because of good reasons. They're, they're jealous. Mm -hmm. Right. And rub it in on the way up. <laughs> yeah. So good. You hit on you touched on so many things there. And I think it's so funny because when you were talking about like you tell the right people, and I always say that, like, you know, we, we all say you are like the five people that you hang around with, right? Like and it's so important. People don't realize that when they're in these situations where they're stuck and they won't they it's like the self-awareness is not there. Are you looking around? Who is in your circle right now? Because usually stuck people are all stuck together, right? They're all yeah. kind of in that same space. And so you touched upon that. But I think it's also funny, like, you know. I always say that like when I put stuff out on social media, I do it for a reason because I put it out there for, I want somebody to hold, like, hold me accountable. So next time you see me, you mm -hmm. ask me, how's that thing coming along that you're working on? Like, hold me accountable to that, you know? <laughs> and and yeah. I, that's why I say, I don't like to put things out there unless I really am like dead set because I'm serious. Like, I want you to ask me next time you see me networking or you see me out and about and you say, Jennifer. Cause I, well, and everybody knows, everybody knows right now I'm working on a program. Everybody that see it, know, they know I'm working on it. So I like it when people say, how's that program coming along? Because I'm like, I'm working, I'm doing it. I'm working. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So true. So true. I love it. So the critique.com, tell us a little bit about that. Cause you've moved into that. And I, I don't even know about that yet. So tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> so the whole concept, um, you know, one of the co-founder um, had a vision because he used to go to um, trade shows in Vegas and see some of the world's best photographer, Jerry Eunice, and the world's best. And they'll get a critique um, and wait in line to be able to see them for 30 seconds. That 30 second may cost uh, that person, expert, uh, 500 bucks. But with that, 30 seconds, it changes life and it changes the way he approaches his job and taking mm -hmm. photos. Um, and in my world, I grew up in a small town where I didn't have access to coaches around the world. I coached myself to an Olympic gold medal after one year. So I felt if I had the right mentorship and the right coaches that I could reach out to, I could probably own a world record in my name. It's never too late, by the way. I can still go do the master's world record. Remember, That's right. That's it can come right. in all different ages. Right? Yep. So yep. within there, um, when the pandemic hit, um, we got together, um, we realized education and people learning is happening in the world. Um, we know the 
want to read a book and learn, they want to watch YouTube and learn, they want to watch other people's and learn. But the most important piece that was missing was the personalized feedback with mm. credible people around the globe. And we figured, you know, these guys are sitting around pandemic hit, but there's people at home who's got some time, they, they need help with certain things. This is a, the right time for us to share and network and learn from each other. So that's when we came up with the concept of critique. You can be anywhere in the world, log in and find an expert based on what you're working on and how you want to improve. They can break it down and put you in the right direction. So we went from knowing the idea we could do photos to sports, which is open up your camera. And then all of a sudden, 25 categories wide open from pitch deck, venture capitalists, um, resumes. Um, we can do PDF, audio, musician, actors. So it start working up and testing all the case studies that we got 25 solid where people want to be critiqued and expert who wants to help. Mm -hmm. We marriage both of the two and welcome to critique. I like it. I like the concept. Very cool. I'm going to have to check that out. I, I that's, a, that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's fun how things sort of, like I say, when you go into things, you sort of kind of have this vision of something and they sort of, they, they manifest and take a life of their own a little bit. You know, it's like when you're, you know, like even when I've been kind of navigating in my journey, because I, I started out in Mary Kay and was with that company for 22, oh. almost 23 years, thought that that's what Ooh. I was going to do. I was, a, I was in a leadership position. I can tell you everything you need to know about how to book, sell, <laughs> coach, and recruit people. Like I learned a lot yeah, yeah, <laughs> while I was absolutely. there, you know, but interestingly enough, you know, it's funny because everything that I do now, there are pieces of that that obviously carry over into the work that I do now. I wouldn't be doing what I'm, I wouldn't even be on this podcast with you right now had I not done that and had I not taught aerobics for many years, you know, because I'd have <laughs> yeah. never had the courage to get up in front of people and, and just be vulnerable, right? If I hadn't yeah, done absolutely. that. Absolutely. But it's funny how, you know, you do things and then you'll get into this work. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, when I came onto my own to start doing my own projects, I had this kind of vision of what I was trying to create. And, you know, I just hit the 50 mark in November. And so it's, this is like the first time in my life that like, I actually know like what I'm doing with all my work. Like I know what <laughs> I'm trying to create, you know what I mean? It's yeah, just, yeah. it's such a good thing. And I know that it's going to continue to kind of keep evolving as I'm going and I'm open to that, but it's like, I know kind of what I'm trying to do with all of it. And it's such a, it's like a cool feeling, you know? Yeah, it is. And, you know, as a child, I remember, and they said, what made part of my success? And part of my success was I learned from others. I don't want to make the same mistakes. So, um, and as I said, because I do a lot of stuff on my own because I didn't have the help. Um, and so I figured if I learn from this person, learn from that person, I can minimize those mistakes. And I not necessarily look at things as mistakes. I look at an opportunity to get better. So I changed the narrative from the negative into a positive and show the what are the possibilities so we wanted to be able to do that we want to be able to help people globally people who are, may not have enough capital or may not have enough resources um and I, I feel no matter what we do in life we need help and mentorship along the way and constant feedback for growth so to be able to interrupt the education space and add a tool where you get personalized it's like yeah. well, how can i improve personalized feedback you know from including the media uh, people, I know a lot of people, especially now, want to do their own podcast, but they don't know what's entailed. You can pick a podcast experts and they will break it down and say, oh, you know what? Let's cut this out, cut this out, save you time and money. And this is what you should be able to do it forward. Same thing for a pitch deck. I'm, I'm doing a raise. I need some capital. Can you look at my pitch deck, my 10 page? Give me advice of the expert opinion. How can I improve this to be able to get a pitch or I have a one minute, two, two minute pitch? Um, break it down, they break it down and say, hey, cut this out, cut this out, bring that and good luck on the next one. And it could be thousands of dollars or time, time, money. <laughs> Those are the thing you want to save time and you want to make money along the way. Right. right? right. So uh, and to be able to accelerate the learning um, is very important because our Gen Z's and the young generation, right. they don't want to read the book. They don't want to put the work in that we did. <laughs> right. They want to give it to me now. So right. to be able to take that and the expert react to that content is unbelievable because they don't have to create any content, the expert. It's already provided for them. They're just reacting based on the knowledge expertise. So it's a win-win scenario and it's short in, short out, right? So um, these guys can, they can easily digest that and to be able to get better. 
yeah. it's I a like perfect it. world we're living in. Yeah. yeah, no, I like well, it. And I think that's so true. I feel like you and I are doing the same thing, but in different ways, you know what I mean? Because all my work right now is how do we, how do we eat our clients complexities, right? Like how do we make their life easier? And, and, you know, I was telling someone the other day, I said, the, the thing I'm building out, it, it's not, it's not anything fancy, but it's, it's all the work I've done in the last 23, 24 years. And it's basically, how do I bring everything I've studied into a place where I just now shave off hopefully 22, 23 years for them to go out and find all this information, right? Because yeah. it, that's how long it took me to do it. It's how long it took me to get it all, you know, and <laughs> I don't want to do yes. it again. No, <laughs> I, I wish that somebody would have told me, you know, all this stuff before, but I, I think yeah. that that's our journey, right? That's our journey. And that's what we yeah. needed to do to get where we needed to be, you know? And so even though I, I say, I wish that I, I tell people, I'm like, man, if I knew then what I know now, I'd have been a rock star. Like I'd have had this thing figured out. Like I'd have been like, yeah. forget all this learning curve stuff, you know, even just like yes. learning a podcast, you know, like, like, and I'm going to say something about you that I really like this part where you said, I picked up on this when you were talking about, you didn't have these mentors and you just, you're industrious. And I'm already getting that from you. Like, you're like, Hey, if I need to know it, I'm going to go find it. And that is one of the things that I've always said. There are two things you said that I, that I can resonate with that one, because I have always been the person that if I want to know something, I'm going to find it. I'm going to figure it out. And I will find the people that have what I need. I'm not going to ask until I need the information, but I will find yeah. the resources and people that I need to get me the information that I need. So I like that you Absolutely. said that. And I, and I think that that is a really, um, I want to almost say kind of like a unique trait yeah. because I think there are not a lot of people that are like that. They <laughs> sit and wait, like hand it to yeah. me, hand it to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, you know, um, the world we're, we're living in is changing, right? And we have to pivot and adapt to those changes and the way we learn. Um, and we want to be able to be the ultimate feedback platform in the next three years. When you think of, I need help, I need feedback, you need critique, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, and, it, and it's all aspect of your life because, you know, sometimes our marketplace is built where you may come into, hey, I want to learn podcasts, but guess what? I have a dog here that's misbehaving. Right? You go in and you get a dog trainer and boom, you, you continue. Oh, you know what? Springtime, I'm going to work on my gardening. Yep. Go in and find a garden expert, you know, HDTV, and help you with that. You know, so that way you can speed up the stuff. Once again, save time, yeah. <laughs> right? And to do more of the things you love. That's the whole yeah. thing, right? Just to be able to do that. So um, we're very excited to be able to provide that to the rest of the world um, as another tool to their book. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I like it. I'm definitely right. going to check it out. I think it's, it sounds like it sounds like a good thing when you need. It's kind of like this AI stuff that's starting to kind of evolve now. And, <laughs> and it's funny because I myself am actually liking that AI, you know, because as I'm building out my thing, I'm like, sometimes I don't have the right words to articulate what I'm trying to say. And so I'm like, let me just put some stuff in there. And I'm like, Ooh, I like that. Let me, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Absolutely. And guess what? It's saving you some time, right? It is. It is. And it's giving you other options, which is awesome. I know yep. that's what it's about. It's You're more than happy to come back on the platform. Yeah. yeah. Giving you a little bit of accessory, a little extra stuff that you, you know, a little extra stuff to go with the research stuff that you need. So I, I like there what you're you doing. It's awesome. awesome. <laughs> so I do want to talk about, cause we, we talked about you being industrious and, and, and resourceful. Yeah. I guess maybe that's the other word I'm saying too, being resourceful, which I think is such a great, uh, great quality to have because you can, when you're resourceful, you just, you find a way, make a way to have it. You said something else. I really, really picked up on that. I liked the part about the obstacles. And, and it's funny because yeah. I think when you're a visionary and a dreamer and I, I find myself I'm in that same category and I know a lot of people that are not and they think very very differently but when you're in that place you know I have always said that for me I, I love challenges like I don't know why but challenges just get me freaking excited I, I you know it's like it's because I like to solve them I like to be yes. able to be like this is hard and I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna solve it and I was telling somebody yesterday when I was meeting with somebody I said you know when I was a kid you know, and I don't know how we're, you know, we were, you would, we have to use, do these math word problems. I still remember oh, this yeah. like when I was in elementary and my mom would come in and she'd be like, Hey, do you want me to show you how to do that? And I would be like, no, I want yeah. to figure it out. Leave me. Oh, I would get so mad, but she would watch me be so frustrated trying to work through it. And for a parent, you're just saying, let me just help the kid. Right. And I would yeah. be like, no, I want to figure this out because I know, and I'm still this way. I know that if I do not figure it out, I will not retain it. I have to figure it out. And it's funny because 
<laughs> when I work with my clients, I always tell them the difference between a coach and a consultant. Like I'm not a consultant, I'm a coach. And when I say I'm a coach, my purpose is that I'm not going to give you the answers to everything you need. I want you to find your answers. I'm going to help you find them. I want you to find them because if I tell you that one thing, if it doesn't work, you can blame me. That's the first thing. But secondly, you're not going to retain or learn anything I've told you if I just put it like right there and say, this is what you need to do. Amen. Right? Because you I totally and I know we've done it. We've done it. And we know the value yeah. in learning to find things and research and get what yeah. we need. Taking that initiative. Well, it's important to challenge them mentally and psychologically because, you know, my kids or my athletes, they will ask me a question. I'm like, they're like, can't you have to give me a straight answer? I'm like, why? I ask a question with a question yeah. because I'm allowing yes. you to think when you're stuck. And I feel like you need that extra answer. Mm -hmm. I will apply it. But until then, I will push the boundaries to continue to think, to think, to think, to think. And then, and then they go, boom, I got it. I'm like, I knew you had it. You're just looking for the easy way up, right? But now that you learned it, you know you can apply that each time to different scenarios. So it's yeah. absolutely important to be able to, to probe and lead them and, but not give them the answers unless it's dead end. I'm like, right. okay. Boom, hello, open up, right? But we want that brain to develop those behaviors. And it's a yeah. behavior situation of critical thinking and thinking outside the box. You know, I, yeah. I tell all the athletes, even when I train them, I said, the tools that I give you, yeah, you're here to run and train and do different things, but it's way beyond um, the regular stuff. I'm teaching you the way of life because each lessons we, we go through per day, a track practice, right? It's to develop your transition over into school, over into business, over into regular daily life. So that way you can adapt and cope. And I'm dealing with the mental aspect of training majority of the time, right? And the lessons that I come out with daily and the psychological piece and, you know, we go to track meets and as soon as we arrive at the track the day before they get a, a text or an email, these videos I wanted to, plan, to watch because it's going to set the tone of the weekend in your mindset because of the... The mind wants it, the body follows, right? right? But you have to train the mental piece of the brain. And a lot of time people forget to train that piece. The more powerful the brain is, the better it is. You know, one of the area, when I talk about it, I said, have you guys ever heard of phantom, phantom pregnancy? And some people could go all the way to nine months and you'll be thinking they're pregnant, but they're not pregnant, pregnant. because the mentally, the brain is sending signals and and developing all the hormones and stuff because it felt like it was pregnant, but it was not pregnant, right? right. So the power of the brain to, to, to bring it to that level, and that's how powerful I know the brain is, right? Yeah. And yeah. when I'm teaching athletes, I'm like, no, you got to build this first. You got to make this foundation strong because if it's strong, the rest of the body will follow it because it, it's the head of the snake. You're leading it, right? So when they understand that piece, they're like, whoa, when I said Wherever you choose to go in life, just remember these things that I taught you about life that's applied throughout your life. And then you should be successful no matter what you do. So you're here not necessarily for training. You're here for my mental yep. life and Olympic stuff, right? And that's yeah. how I depart the knowledge. That's so good. I guess, oh, that's so good. I was like giving me chills. Like, I'm like, it is. It's, that's why I said <laughs> in the very beginning, it transfers everything you learn. And, and being, whether it's in sports and business, all of these are life, they're, they're useful. And that's the thing. I think that when you, when you learn to become many things resourceful and you learn to adapt this idea that you're going to be faced with challenges and adversity yeah. and, and moments of wanting to throw in the towel and all that. And so when you just accept that that's part of the journey, that's part of the process, it's no longer a decision of, will I get through it? It's, it's, it's what I'm going to do to get, it, it's more of my way that I'm going to get through it, you know? And so that's why I, I, even in business, I've always said that, you know, I recognize there's always challenges. If there's not a fire burning, we ain't moving. Like something's just not yeah. happening. Right. So yeah. I just accept that as part of, part of that challenge again those word problems again and my job is to figure out how i'm going to push through that that's the way i look at every day in this journey and it was no different when i was running you know all the time we would do races my husband and i would do races he's actually he was an actually an uh an ultra endurance athlete so he did like oh, 2400 miles yeah like crazy yeah, 100k oh yeah yes <laughs> 100 milers. I mean, he was crazy. And he was a very yeah. good runner. He, I mean, he yeah. won several 50 milers. He was a very good runner, did Boston, did Leadville. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, I just remember going through that and there were weekends that we would run like back to back. Like we might do a mar half marathon on Saturday, turn around Sunday, yeah. do another one. He did one few years. He did like three marathons in a row, like Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you know, but there would be times I would go out there and I would be, okay, I'm going to run this half marathon. And my brain was like, we got this, we got this. And I'd get out there and do fine. The next day I'd go do a 5k and be like, I can't even do this today. I just mentally could not do it. My body was physically prepared. I just ran a half marathon. Yeah. Evidently, you know, we're prepared, but the mind yeah. is so powerful. And if you think you can, you can. And if you think you can't, you can't. That's what I always say. Marathon or different beast. Uh, did, does he have his buckle for the ultra marathon? I think they give out some like yes, a belt. He's got He's got lots of things. He's got lots of things. He's so funny too because he won't ever talk about it. He's such a humble dude. Like humble. he just won't talk about. I'm like, dude, you could write a book on this stuff because, you know, he he ran with he. I always joke. You'd probably know David Goggins. Everybody talks about David yeah. Goggins. My husband actually ran with David Goggins and beat him in, in, in the race. So yeah. I always love because they're always like, oh, and he's a great guy. But my husband won't talk yeah. about any of this stuff. I'm like, dude, you should write a book about it. You know, there are people that want to know. know the mindset. Behind these. Send, them, send them over to critique. Send them over to exact. That's a great idea. I need it uh, because Thank you. we ha we have so many runners around the world that are looking for technique, or mental peace. Uh, we've got all aspect where we can uh, once again, it's brain. It's a reaction uh, based on his knowledge and expertise. So yeah. um, send them on over. There's some. There's someone for everyone. I'm gonna talk to you about that. That's such a good idea, right? You gotta find yeah, the right go. platform. Every, I feel like so many people have such great knowledge, you know, and it's just a matter of parent getting them in the right space where they can erase some of that imposter syndrome and share their knowledge. Because I say that if you have something that you are good at or that you've been able to experience. There are other people that are dying to know what it is that you did. Like, what did you do? And it's not Absolutely. what you're doing. It's what did you do to get where you are right now? We want to know those questions, right? So yeah, I like absolutely. what you're doing with that whole platform. I think that's awesome. So I want to kind of ask you some of this mental stuff. You said a lot of great stuff about the mental stuff, but I would yeah. like to know because I feel like this is a, a, a one of those questions that, it, that people like to know because you're obviously well accomplished. You've done some great things, but I'd like to know like what was maybe – one of the biggest challenges, aside from maybe not having the mentors, having to do this on your own, but was there something, anything else that you felt like was kind of a challenge you had to overcome to get into this space that you're in? Oh, absolutely. Um, for me, uh, one of the big challenge was pivoting from an athlete into the business world because that was part of my dreams and didn't have the, I guess, the, the norm, the society paperwork or degree <laughs> right <laughs> to yeah. to to go over there to make that transition easy because you know they say well do you have a degree uh, you know and to get advanced within a company and then want that degree at the end of the day i'm like so in other words you're telling me the degree to me is is a fact that you went to school for four years and right. you finished that's yeah, it. Got a check bar. <laughs> yeah, right. To show that you're committed and you can follow through and accomplish right. certain things. At the end of the day, that's what the degree is, in a sense. Because most times, most people probably don't end up with a job in their field anyway. So I said, well, I've spent six years and I've focused and I've got a deg my degree is I'm a doctor at speed and I got my gold medal to show you my my end results <laughs> right yeah. so uh with that i take that template and i go and, and try to get into the business world so we're going from sponsorship which i knock on the doors i do like as a child i've i had my lawyer since 16. so i've learned the legal words and terms and you know give you one and use a different word to take it back so i've learned all that piece uh so now that i manage myself as a as a athlete i uh, coach myself as an athlete at the time uh on my own sports agent so all of that stuff i have my office my fax machine back then the whole nine yards so i've learned all that pieces now we're going in from say a six-figure deal or a four-figure deal uh right up front because i know if i put the work in now i can get a sponsorship and then stretch it out and teach me how to plan my budget and all that stuff so when I left the athletic world, now it's like, oh, I got to go into regular life. <laughs> right? So went into for my first job, and uh, they were talking about interviewing. They were talking, I think back then, they were like $16 an hour. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I can't go from this to $16 an hour. I, I'm valuable more than that. <laughs> right? But once again, they said, you don't have the experience. So I found I was patient enough where I said, okay, 
Um, I think the first job I ended up working at uh, one of the banking institute in the PR marketing area. Um, and once again, I didn't have a marketing PR degree, but I, I went to my first six months, I went to college to take journalism and PR and stuff. But guess what? I said on my resume, I said I have, I think it was 10 years of marketing experiences. And they're like, tell me a little bit more about that. So I said, well, I did my first Nike contract at 16. I wrote my contract and I present to the president of Nike and state my state and i said i'm not an athlete i'm more than an athlete i'm a brand and this is what i do off the field and you can investigate me so right away i said well I, those are part of marketing <laughs> public relations <laughs> right so I, and i locked a deal in for four years so and i used that same play template for other things so that allowed me that experience to be able to get my job where i could make 20 something bucks per hour instead of 16 dollars an hour right and then i move into uh, the retail environment same thing i didn't have that knowledge of expertise but i said guess what based on my nike contract i test product each week <laughs> and i know different materials manufacturing that can break down the features and the benefit of each product so then once again, I got the job with my knowledge and expert, expertise and excel at it. And then I went into the medical field for 10 years and I didn't know anything about medical because growing up as a child, I always hate anything that ends with the ology because it, it's big. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> my mother gave me uh, medical books as a child to read because she was a nurse and looking to be a doctor. Yeah. And it just go one year to the next so when i actually went into the interview at the end of the interview they gave me a test out of 10 biomechanics by you know anatomy all that stuff and i'm not gonna lie to you i had five out of ten the ceo and the president and the ceo look at me one you know 95 percent of our staff has a kinesiology degree i said well that's nice but i'm coming here because of my customer service experience, my knowledge of products, and the way I deliver things. So we can try this test tomorrow when I wake up. <laughs> so I went back the next day. Um, I got six out of 10. They're looking and wondering, uh, did we hire the right guy? Are we gonna hire the right guy? I said, listen guys, you must understand, yesterday I had five out of 10. Today, I have six out of 10. That's growth. Right? I love they're it. Look at, right? <laughs> so they look, they look at it and says, well, you know, we can't afford to pay you what you think you, 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 you would like. I said, tell you what, give me the opportunity. Within a year, I want to replace back that income and allow me to run it like my business. And I guarantee you, I'll, I'll make it this number within three years. I'm going to give you a three-year commitment. Right? And the owner shake my hand. Everybody shake my hand and sign the paperwork. I said, whoa, 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 we're not signing this paperwork. So I said, what do you mean you're not signing the paperwork? So I said, I need to go over it and I'm not going to hire a lawyer, but I need at least a week to go through the paperwork. And I went through the paperwork, circled this, took this out, this, made my notes, sent it back to them. I said, I will not sign this because it's benefiting you as a company. It doesn't benefit me as a staff. So here's something that mutually both we can be happy with. They made all the amendments and it's, they said this is the first time they've ever changed a, uh, an agreement, a work thing. Because at the end of the day, I look, I look at it, I said, well, you're protected, but I'm not protected. And I said, I'm my own lawyer. So just with all the knowledge and expertise. So each job and each situation I went in, it's, I take it knowing that I'm going to learn something from it. I'm going to take it to go towards my next job to improve. And yes, I was there for almost 10 years and made them a lot of money along the way. But now I said, I'm reached a time in my life where I need to do something for myself. And because um, I'm very passionate and spend more time with my family. So you know, this is the best of both worlds. I get to control my schedule. And I spent a lot of time. I was telling my son, I said, he's turning 10. I said, I've spent over 70,000 hours with you. I've spent, since you were born, I've spent over 3,300 3, days with you since you've been born. I said, no kid get that much love and attention that you do. I said, that's pretty awesome. And I said, he's like, daddy, how much more hours are you got to spend with me? I said, well, if you do that up times two, I need up. No, I said, there you go. I said, we've got a lot more to go until you've gone to college. Then now I've minimized my hours, but I will miss and love you, but I might move in with you too. <laughs> right. But overall, you know, those are some of the, the biggest challenges was to transition from an athlete into regular life because you're going from a major type of income to 
what minimum wage what the government took 25 percent. what do i end up going home it's it was a shock to my system yeah. It, yeah. ego as well <laughs> right? Right. right so um but yeah in life um be prepared and, and that's a great thing when we plan and we always use the the business analysis squad right um and i use it with athletes i use it with business because we have to know what are the threats and how it's going to affect your business, what are the opportunities. And if you plan that and knowing that in advance, it, it prepares you psychologically, emotionally, mentally, physically to pivot and knowing that there might be an area of challenges where you're going to have to be patient, tap into your spiritual uh, connection, your faith connection, uh, wait out the storm. But because you planned it, you have a better idea that that may happen. So, uh, so it won't become a shock to your system. Um, so I do expect to have some challenges, but knowing with those challenges, there's great opportunities on the other side waiting for you. Yeah. You said a lot of really good things there. I, I love it. All of it. It was so good. And, and, and I think it's so interesting when you were talking in the beginning about you're having the college degree. And it's so funny because I always talk about that, even like with coaches and stuff, it's like these people will decide to go like they'll have been in a career and they're like, well, I just want to go be like a life coach now. And I'm like, <laughs> you go get a certification, but you know, it's like, it's, it, it's like the experience is so invaluable. You know what I mean? Like, it's so yeah. like, you can't replace that. And I think that you, when you have that, that experience that you can bring to the table, it's it, to me, it is so much. I mean, like if I were going to go right now and hire a running coach, Am I going to get somebody who's certified, you know, if you have a kinesiology, you know, kinesiology background, that's great. But I want to, I want to find the runner. I want to find the person who <laughs> laced those tennis shoes up and has completed the marathon. You tell me what you know. Like, that's what I want to know. You know what I'm saying? And That's a challenge I have too when I'm dealing with uh, mentors is, I, yes, you can read a book, but I want the person who's done it. I want the mistakes. I want all that stuff from that person. Yes, you read a book. And then, and then, you know, I have lots of friends that are psychologists, et cetera, but I'm sorry. They're dumb as a bat. We're not saying all of them are. We're just going to say some of them are, right? I, I sell, yeah, yeah. Some of them is dumb as a bat. Like even doctors. I, say, I work with a lot of doctors and some of them, they're dumb. They don't have common sense, <laughs> right? But guess what? They're good at reading a book. They're yep. great at reading a book and say, boom, 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 yep. and refer, right? But the whole point is that experience alone, where you can go through that journey, that's priceless. Right? I agree. I'd rather choose one of those guys than, you know, unless you got a book and you've proven, then great. Then it backs I it agree. up. But yeah, I'm with I you on that. Do. Yes, you said, all, you said all the things I want to say. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. you don't know how many times I go around with doctors. <laughs> like, I just like, I'm, I go in there and I'm like, oh. you're not even telling me anything that's even making sense. The pain is here. Why are we looking over here? We need to look at the spot. Where the I get it. I, I understand referred pain. I understand referred pain. Okay, I get all that. But like, you're telling me things that are just not adding up right now because that's going to check off off your list. We're going to go do this, this, but, and this. Because you the know? book says so. The book because says the book so, so says it, should, it. It, it should be right. Well, that, time has changed, yeah. technology has changed, and common sense has not changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just that, it. it's just that now it becomes less common. That's the problem. Yes, yes, yes. Well, this has been, you, you are so awesome. I love what you're doing. I, I would love to keep you on here forever, like pick your brain, because I think you and I are thinking a lot of the same things. And like I said, it's so funny. It's why I love talking to athletes, because I have so much fun just getting into their heads and like, you know, talking about the mindset and all of that good stuff, because there's so many parallels. And I think great athletes make great business owners. I think they, that it carries right. over and it carries over into life. And it, and it teaches even that your kids learn valuable lessons watching you go through those things. Because I always say more is caught than taught. They pick up on all those things. But I want to ask you one last question. I think you've already kind of said some of this stuff. Okay. But I want to kind of ask you again, because I don't normally ask this one, which is funny. But what do you love about all this? What do you love about what you get to do? I love that I get to help someone. As a child, um, you know, when I passed my selfish years of 25, I, I said, you know, I want to make someone happy per day or help someone per day. And, I, and it could be from when I get up to a like, smile <laughs> and just brighten up someone's light or a word of encouragement. Um, so now being in the age that I'm at and in this part of my life where I get to help people, not just one on one anymore. I have I, they have access to me globally, <laughs> where I can help and change someone's life, and to be able to be part of a team that created something like Critique 
to be able to help globally people all over from different industry to help them get better. Because we all want to get better. We all want to improve. And to be part of this legacy where if I should die tomorrow, as I tell my son, which hopefully that don't happen, knock on wood, <laughs> um, that we can leave something behind that can help people get better and, and do better in the, in the world and the improvement. Um, and I said, that's one of the greatest legacy next to my son, because when I go, he's, t- he's picking up, he's going to be the CEO. <laughs> right? yeah. and, uh, well, well, he wants, I understand he wants to be a doctor because he wants to help animals. He loves the animals. And I said, if you want to go rescue these things and do all these things, I, and I started teaching him, I said, well, first you need money. To get money, you need education because education is the key to success. Sports allows, allows you to open doors and opportunity. So if you become a doctor, right, um, now you can help in case the animal get hurt. But I want you to use sports, and when you become very good at sports and you bust open the door, you go NFL, golf, and whatever because it's middle name is lion. It's a um, tiger. I'm fascinated with tiger, and the baddest animal is a lion, not a tiger. So I said, if you go in there and you mash up the golf course, or you can, you're not that good, but you can make some deals because a lot of the business people want to go golf to make deals. Right. So you need to have that in your tool belt, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so that way you can make the money. Go buy the place because you need to own thing like Monopoly, and then that way you're a doctor, you can help fix them. So I'm thinking of all the pieces. So when he's planning, I said that you gotta put all this stuff together, and then you're gonna have to have the master plan, and then go in and go achieve it. You need money, you need to own it, and you need to be able to help. And I said within there, make sure you don't leave God out of it because you need you need that foundation and that spirit. So I guide him along there, and if something should happen to me, he has the tools to be able to guide himself through life. So, so awesome. that's my next big legacy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing all that. I haven't, like I said, I haven't asked that question in a while, but sometimes every now and then I'm like, I'm going to ask this person. I think this is the right person I need to ask this to. So I want to ask you just a couple fun questions, totally random yeah. fun questions. I always do these. They're just kind of the off the cuff thing. So I want to know, because I know you've got mentors and all of that stuff, but I'd love yeah. to know maybe a favorite book that resonates with you. Maybe one book that you read that you're like, this is one that I would like say, go read. Uh, time Minute Management that I enjoy. I, love I think it. by Rockefeller, Rockefeller, okay. when I got into the business space. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You popped that off quick too. That's good. I have one too that I always like, if somebody asks me, I have the one book. Well, the funny thing is uh, my medical job, um, they like to do bonuses. So okay. part of the bonuses, each book that I read and complete it and do a, a I guess, uh, a little summary, book summary yeah. report. They give you a fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, I'd have been so with it, you. It, I'd have been yeah. let's read. So I, I don't even care to read, but you know, I'm like, okay, all right, I can bag this off in a weekend and then write my summary. Oh, that's a thousand fifteen hundred dollar bonus right there. I'd be doing the same thing. I'd be like, give me the book. I'm gonna read the book. I'm gonna read the book. So funny story. I used to not be a big reader, and then I actually, I, it's a long story, but I was sitting in this conference and I was kind of in a bad place, and this is in 2018, and I was like, the speaker got up and she was talking about John Maxwell who is one of my favorite mentors. And he's like, if you do these five things in your life, you do it for one year, your life's never going to be the same after that. And I was like, I go through and I pick four and I'm like, okay, I'm already doing these. What's the fifth thing? Like the fifth thing I'm going to change. And so I decided to start reading. And that was like the, I tell everybody, I've wrote about it in my book. It was like one of the biggest turning points for me because the day that I started doing that, I've read for like an entire year, every single day. Yeah. And that year was the year that I ended up launching my LLC, formed my podcast. I joined all these networking groups. I just had all this stuff start opening up after yeah. I started reading these books. And so I attribute that to like, I'm like, reading is so important. That's why I love that question. I get a lot of really good books from it. Knowledge. All right. One other question I want to add. Oh, because I know that you are healthy like I am. And so I love this question. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. What is the one thing that you like really like? It's like that's the that's the guilty pleasure food. Um, Jamaican patties. Ooh, oh, what is my that? Gosh, listen up. All right. Let's make, let me sit up for this one. So there's a place in Toronto. It no longer exists. It's called Jamaican beef patties. So I travel the world and I taste patties all over the globe. But this place called Randy's Patty was banging. I call it, uh, in a sense, it's like a crackhead on, on patties. <laughs> Excuse me, I tell them. All right, so uh, I was living in Vancouver, right? So 
uh, every month, and I had my friends around me. I said my white folks, my Caucasian, my Asian. I have different ethnic group because we're multicultural up there in Vancouver. Yeah. And every every first of each month, people come and drop off money because you know I had a deal with a friend at UPS that picks up the product and deliver it. Oh so God. they'll take it up at they take it up at five o'clock. Uh, all cooked, baked, and frozen. It's like a pastry with beef in it and, and stuff. By the time it arrives in Vancouver, it's 7 a.m. at my house. So I actually bought a freezer just for the patties. Stuff. <laughs> and I have containers coming. So they know by midday, come pick up your boxes of patty. Um, so I've done this for about almost 20 years. So I moved back to Toronto area, uh, where I'm at now. And the place, after the pandemic with some other challenges, it's closed but I heard Drake bought the place. So I'm waiting for him to put it in grocery store and take it on a global level. Like people around the world, like if you go to this place, line up. From line up from it open till it closes. That's how busy the place is. So when I roll up, I, hey, Tony, it's Robert here. I'm just popping in. I, I don't have time, but get at least eight boxes ready for me. Oven baked, cold, and she bagged up everything. So I arrive, I just, give her some cash, take my stuff, and I'm gone. People are like, what, what do you mean to get in line? I said, listen, man, you need to know people. <laughs> okay. That's but right. it's the guiltiest pleasure um, and patties. And I think I still have, I think, six still frozen in my freezer because we know that we're going to close. So there was yeah, you're like hanging on like to three them. Three days. Oh, yeah. So, Drake, <laughs> if you can hear me, uh, I think he's going to be in Toronto next. we got a friend soccer thing I'm trying to get there. I'm going to tell him you need to have this at one of the biggest grocery stores. We need to take it on a global level because people around the world is waiting for Randy's patty. Oh, oh my gosh. Cause I don't, I, I don't deal never, with junk food. Yeah. I never heard of that. That is so fun. That is so fun. Yeah, oh, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> I eat it for breakfast. I eat it for lunch. When I pop in, I eat like 12 of them. All right. Just, that's so and then great. combine with my jerk chicken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. That's all. That's awesome. Thank you for sure. And that's so fun. I love that and question. I that's the first time I've heard that one. So that that's uh, fun. Usually I get like chocolate or ice cream or, you know, something like that. Mm, I'd always yeah. love to ask my health people that because they're like, like, I don't eat a lot of junk, you know, like I just don't, yeah. but mm, like if I were to yeah. say, what's my guilty pleasure? I'm like, right now I'm hung up on this low carb yogurt, low carb granola, with blackberries. Yeah. That's like my, that's like my dessert, you know, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, mm. all right, Robert, if our audience wants to get in touch with you, maybe they want to find this critique.com, learn a little bit more about you just check out your work all that good stuff where do we want to send them absolutely if you want me on your stage i'm electrifying captivating debonair soi robert esme.com baby log in um if you're looking at sports training here blastoff.com but at the end of the day i'm global everywhere meet me at critique.com slash robert esme um utilize it i just want to make sure you know we are a resource to you your kids your family, your co-workers. We've got experts from everywhere. Anything that you're working on, log on. We can help you with that. Perfect. We'll make sure too, when this goes out, we'll get the links in there. So we'll get you all connected and that way they know where to find you. Our people will be checking it out. They'll be like, who's this person? Be so much fun. I'm so glad you got on here. You are so fun. <laughs> love your energy. Love what you're doing. I think energy is important, you know, because nothing like doing a podcast Absolutely. when you just have like dead energy on the air, right? So I love it. Yeah, that's Do you right. Want to, so, yeah. Thank you so much for, you know, being authentic and real and sharing all your, all your greatness. That's right. Come pinch me. See, I told you I was real. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. So fun. All right. To our audience, of course, if you enjoy our show, please oh, be sure you oh, check us on. out. Rocky, come here. Oh, you got a friend to, to show us real quick? That, that, that's my best. Come here, Rocky. Say hello to see. the people. All right, Rocky. Oh, fun. Uh, ball. Show me ball. Give them, give them a kiss. Go. Go. He's yeah, like, I'm gonna I don't turn know him about into... this. Forget that camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to turn this him into a Snoop Dogg. A Snoop, Snoop Dogg dog. doggy here. Right. This hey, doggy, shut up. Uh, whoa, shut up at your catching skills. Ready? Whoa. Oh, there he Good. got it. He Give, did. Me awesome. Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. Shut up. Give me five. Give me five. Yeah, paw. Shake a paw. That's right. Shut up. What's right. going on? Yeah, That's right. right. Say cheese. Oh, yeah. So he's like, yeah, he's like, trying to kiss you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So fun. Come, awesome. Yeah. Well, to our audience, right. if you enjoy our show, please be sure you give us a rating. You can get, jump over yeah. to Apple Podcasts, click the subscribe button on YouTube so we can keep sharing all these incredible stories. And we do want to leave you with a final parting thought. In order to live the extraordinary, you must start. And every start begins with a decision. You guys take care. That's be right. safe. Be kind to one another. We will see you next time. That's right. If your dog's misbehaving, you better come see us. That's where we have the best dogs, baby. Be critique. <laughs> <laughs>